As you'll have seen from the thumbnail, today's quite an exciting day. Not only because the sun is shining, but we're doing a big break installation in the, uh, the FTO. But before we do it, we've got a few things we need to do first. Uh, if not, like if we kind of to pan round to my left, you'll see we've got some nice new wheels. These are Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 8 NK wheels, 17 inch, wrapped in lovely, not so new, uh, Yokohama ADOAR tires. They are an 8J wheel. The F2 originally came with a 6.5J wheel, so things are rubbing slightly and we've got to deal with that. We are doing a big brake setup using Mitsubishi calipers. Before I start on that, there are cheaper ways and different ways of doing this now. You can do it with Willwood calipers, I think, and there's kits out there. Um, but we've decided to stick with the Mitsubishi parts. So we're doing the big brake setup with Mitsubishi GTO or 3000 GT calipers. These are the non-turbo version. I believe the turbo has slightly longer lugs because I would assume the discs are bigger. Natalie spent some time refurbishing these calipers with new pistons, new seals, and painting them with lovely, very high temperature paint and very high temperature lacquer, a proper job on these. The discs we're using are in this box. Now these are actually um, Nissan 350Z discs. Um, specifically, they are the Brembo edition 350Z discs. And they are massive, man. <laughs> what size are these? You'll forgive me if I've got things written on this box here. These are actually 324 mil discs compared to the original piddly little 276 mil discs that are on the car. Let's hold them up against the wheel so you can see. So that's definitely gonna fill that wheel and more importantly, should give us a lot more stopping power at the track. So they're sweet, they weigh a ton. I'm gonna put it back in the box. Okay, to make all this work, you need an adapter plate. Um, there's a company called Freaky Parts, which sell adapter plates. There's nothing special about it. It's just an adapter plate that allows you to mount the caliper onto the back of the FTO hub. We've got a few other little bits and bobs. I am going to attempt to connect the brake lines with standard banjo bolts instead of uh, GTO brake lines, so we've essentially got braided FTO brake lines on here at the moment and I'm fairly confident that they're going to work provided that I convert them over to a banjo fitting rather than this weird fitting that FTO has as standard. We've got one brake caliper pin for the GTO calipers and the reason we've got that is because the ones that came with the calipers have probably seen better days. There's quite a lot of corrosion on these. I think they're perfectly serviceable and they bloody better be because we bought four of these new pins from Amayama. Uh, they accepted the order and then a couple of weeks later, I think it was, turned around and went, actually, we don't have those things in stock, um, which is an experience I've also had with the Honda Civic guys, just so you know. So if you are using Amayama to buy parts from Japan, it's a great website. I would implore you to check it out. Amayama, um, but be aware that sometimes they list stuff and their stocks aren't exactly correct, so you may or may not get what you want. Uh, what I'm going to try and do if I get time is see if I can make some of these, because there's not really a lot to it, it's just a bit of rod um, with a forged end on it. And then to make it all work and stop properly, Natalie's chosen again Project Mew pads. Partly the reason for that is because we like the pads and they worked well, but partly the reason and one of the downsides about using these whopping lovely Mitsubishi calipers is you're limited with uh, what brake pads you've got a choice for. So a little caveat to this video is, yes, it may have been a better idea to go with Willwoods because I think there's more options available to you with the Willwoods regarding pads and you, you're not completely limited in choice. You do get a whole selection of Ferrodo pads that you could go for all the DS2500s and all that sort of stuff and Project Mew ones. Quick observation, we wanted to just weigh the wheels. Natalie's grabbed the scales from the house uh, and the old wheels are 17 and a half kilos with the tires on. The new ones are 20 kilos exactly. Now both of them have slightly worn tires for a fair comparison, I suppose. So you can see here, you should be able to make out this little fleck of rubber. These tiny little grooves are what rubbed on the chassis that I'm trying to, you know, fix, uh, even just moving it in and out of the garage. So these would have been undrivable as it would have been stood already. One of the first problems that we've encountered, obviously, is the brake dust shields aren't big enough to accommodate the new uh, discs. Now, I previously had decided I was gonna make dust shields for the car, and I'd only made one, but now I need to make a second one. So this is the one that I previously made. It's a bit rough and ready around these edges, but, it did the job beautifully at the track day. So I'm just using this as a template to make a new one with so we can fit these discs. 
So you may or may not notice a little bit of time has passed. Um, I've actually been doing a little bit of work underneath the car whilst we've been waiting for new brake lines. I tried to use the FTO brake lines that we had and being crafty about it. Okay, so to show you a bit of detail about that, this is the 3000 GT caliper that would normally have a fitting that looks like this in it with the brake line obviously coming off of here. Um, there's no real reason why you couldn't use a banjo bolt in here with the FTO caliper, but this machine surface would have to be perfectly flat for that. And I just don't have the means to do that in the garage. So it was easy enough just to buy this new line that's just gonna screw straight in there, seal up nice and well, hopefully, and off we go. Okay, so to give you a little idea of what we've done just to make these tires fit, uh, there's a panel joint here where my finger is running that runs all the way in at the wheel arch. Uh, that has been bent over. It's very difficult to see because I've shut it all, but about the width of my finger, I've bent inwards towards the wheel arch and that now clears the tire quite happily. So we get some, we get a little bit of rubbing on the inside of the wheel arch just here. Uh, all being said, we are gonna raise the car up on the BCs a little bit more because the tire's been so much bigger, it makes sense to have a little bit more clearance. But yeah, hopefully that's nice and neat, shouldn't rub in there now. Okay, so with the disc and the caliper off, this is what you're obviously presented with your hub. By fettling, this is the bracket that we're going to be using to fit the, the GTO caliper. When they come from Freaky Parts, they are uh, just bare aluminium. I've had it anodized. You can see there's a cutout, right? There's a step in it there. Uh, hopefully you can make that on camera. That's going to sit like so uh, on the hub. Now, the problem that I've got is the step just where my thumb is on the lower part of the hub here the hub is actually cast a little bit imperfectly because obviously Mitsubishi didn't need that part of it to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind a little bit of this casting off here. That will give me enough clearance here to get this bracket to sit all the way in and to bolt up nicely. It feels like it would bolt up now, but it would be forcing it a little bit. So if I just take the tiniest little bit of metal off of there, it'll allow that whole bracket to sit inboard slightly and we'll get it bolted up. Okay, so basically it's literally just the casting mark that I've taken off of there and made it smooth, like a millimetre or two of material maximum. So that's then going to allow me to get this bolt in nice and easy, finger tight, and the same with the top, no problem whatsoever. Lovely. There's, there's now a tiny bit of play left and right, so when I tighten that up, that's going to fit beautifully well. So here's the disc. It's a whopper, man. The size of that big bad boy. That is two and a half kilos heavier than the original disc that was on the car. So definitely a little bit extra mass there on the brakes. On the flip side of that, one of the amazing thing is the FTO caliper being cast iron is actually pretty much the same weight as the GTO aluminium caliper. Even though the GTO one, FTO, GTO is vastly bigger. But this, being aluminium, weighs, is actually 200 grams lighter, this caliper, than this big heavy cast iron thing. So you give some and you take some away. Uh, another thing to note is if you're using these Freaky Parts adapters, they come with four bolts, uh, which are Allen socket head bolts. Um, the bolts go through the back of the hub and then actually wind into the adapter plate itself. You're going to need four these are M12 by 1.5 millimeter threaded bolts. Uh, and the ones that I'm using here, I think are about 25 mil long. Um, obviously go longer and cut them down if you need to. And a washer would be nice on the back of them to bolt the caliper into the bracket itself. So don't forget you're gonna need, you need some M12 by 1.5 bolts if you're using the Freaky Parts adapters on the FTO with the GTO calipers like we've got this set up here. Um, let's put the last bolt in, put the pads in, and get the brake line connected. The lines are a little bit tight, but they don't foul anything, and I'm relatively happy with them. But my mechanic and me will be keeping an eye on them just to make sure that they don't get any stress in them. There's no torsional load in them, they're not twisted in any way. Before we put the pads in, let's show you them. Project Mew Racing Pads 777s. Uh, just in case I've not mentioned it, the only thing I'm a bit concerned by is there's not actually a crazy amount of friction material there. You know, there's my finger in comparison with it. And I don't have that fat fingers. I've got fat fingers, but not that bad. 
Um, big wide pad though. One thing that's immediately apparent, they are not a perfect, perfect fit. So there's a tiny bit of material just on this edge here that's sort of sitting proud of the disc. Which I'm not, it's not the biggest problems, but it is going to mean that there's going to be a, an edge that will wear and it will sort of sit fatter than the disc. What I would like to do is take the pad and just chamfer that edge off a little bit. But I don't know really, you know, until it all settles and it's actually working, I don't know exactly where that's going to lie, so I don't want to waste that pad material. We'll run it for a little bit. As soon as I can see a line begin to appear, I'll know how much I've got to take off them and I'll put them in. But, you know, by and large, they're a pretty damn good fit. So let's get all this in, button it all up, and then we'll show you what it all looks like when it's basically complete. It's done. We have got bigger brakes on the FTO. I just wanted to show you what they look like before we put the wheel on. They look rather tasty. So we've just come out in the FTO. I'm going to go and brave the outside even though it's a bit windy, so bear with me if it gets a bit noisy. Hang on a sec. Right, so I'm outside. It is, it is, it's mother windy. We're in the Pennines here, as you can see. And it's, uh, it's beautiful out here. As is the old girl on her fantastic wheels, but it's a bit too windy to talk about them, I think. Check that out, there you go, eh? A full wheel, full of brake. All right, let's get out of the wind and we'll talk about it. The brakes, holy shit, are really impressive. Uh, what can I say about them? Um, fits perfect, they're bedding in quite nicely. It breaks in a nice straight line. There's no issues with the fitment of any of the parts. Uh, and the pads and the discs, man, it's a vast improvement over the standard FTO calipers, I will admit that. All is not well on this front though, and we have still quite a lot of rubbing. So we've got a bit of a mountain to climb here, I think. I think what the best thing to do is, Jesus Christ, he was going fast. I think the best thing to do here is go back to the garage, we'll get her jacked up and we're going to have a little look at the wheel wells. I've just shut stall the wheel wells, partly to kind of protect them, but also because I knew that there'd be a bit of rubbing. I thought, I had a little inclination we were going to still have trouble with these wheels. 235 rubber in front might be too wide, might be unavoidable, but we don't want to bend these 808 uh, tyres if we can help it, so we're going to try and do something about it. But before we can do that, I need to know what's going on. It doesn't rub under compression, the BC Racing shocks we have set fairly stiff, so it basically doesn't compress very much. The thing fucking corners like it's flat. It's only on lock, and frankly speaking, I reckon we could probably drive the car on track like this, but we've got to get to the track, and I don't want to end up having to go around roundabouts and take a wide berth, and Natalie doesn't want to drive it in such a way, which is totally sensible, and I completely agree. So let's get back to the garage and have a little look. Passenger side wheel arch, we've got a bad rub on that extended part there. We've got a small rub here, and we've got a rub on the inside of this wheel here. All right? So bear that in mind. Driver's side, bad news, man. That's a big rub there. It's a big rub on the inside there. That there is going right the way through to the metal. You can probably see that shining. No rub here, though. Interesting. The alignment cannot be right. You can see here and illustrated cleverly is where the pad is connecting. We bedded them in fairly well now. And where it's not touching, obviously you can make that out from here pretty well. Quite a lot of dust already. <laughs> the way I see it, we've got two options. The first one is a hammer, maybe some metal work and an alignment. The second one is smaller tires. The most sensible way of doing it is to look at how many tires are available for each size the ease of buying them, the cost of buying them, and make a choice based on that. That's logical, isn't it? I think so. I think that's sensible. Watch this space. We've got track day coming up in a couple of weeks. Got to pull the finger out and get it sorted pretty quick. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, pay more out.